All right, good morning, everybody. This is Rob Akins. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit this morning about the personal statement section of the NIH Biosketch. And this uh, is, again, driven by questions coming up from investigators, some approaching this for the very first time. Uh, so, nice. Here we go. Um, the personal statement can be a little bit challenging, uh, especially the first time you kind of think about it. Uh, in fact, it's a it's a a really valuable tool if you can organize it and communicate well what the reviewers are expecting to see. But it can be frustrating, sort of challenging, uh, to as this image definitely shows uh, to put together your first one. Um, so let's just take a look at at what you need to do. Check out the directions uh, that NIH puts together, and these are the current directions. The bolding is mine. Um, but briefly, the personal statement really is to explain why you, as the investigator, the person who's being represented there, are well suited for the roles uh, in this project. So things like your training, your previous work, uh, your expertise, how you work with your collaborators, uh, your details of the environment where you work, uh, your past performance, those are all uh, good things uh, that you should put in your personal statement to communicate to the reviewers why you are a good person for this, while well, you're well suited for your roles. As an aside, this is different than the quick mention in your specific aims, where you want to just give information in a sentence or two uh, in the aims about why you're suited. This is paragraphs uh, that you can write. At the end of your personal statement, you can cite up to four publications or research products um, that highlight your experience qualifications for the specific project. And those things are, are different than your contributions to science, which we'll talk about in a future uh, conversation. Uh, so that's what they want. Um, the, these additional pieces of information are for everyone. So if you have anything that you wish to explain, um, family care responsibilities, um, sort of lapses in your training because of illness, disability, military service, anything like that. And this is particularly useful for uh, clinicians. Um, who may have had a clinical fellowship that interrupted uh, their research progression, this is the area. Uh, the personal statement is where you discuss it. If you published on a, under a different name, um, and if you have any um, specific contributions that are not going to be included in your Section C, um, but that are, um, you know, support your ability to act in the role that you're undertaking for the grant, this is where it goes. You do not repeat um, Section C information in your personal statement. Uh, and there's no figures or, or graphics or anything in, in this particular section. There's some other things that really only apply to a subset of people. The dot, dot, dot is something I took out um, that's very specific to this um, uh, a type of training um, uh, grant that you might be writing uh, eventually down the road. Uh, but for this group, um, if you're applying for a career development, say a K award, and I know some of the folks on the phone are doing that, or if you're writing a research education grant, um, the, um, anybody who's on your grant who is going to participate is encouraged to provide a personal statement with their biosketch. They're not required to, but they're encouraged to do that. Uh, and if you're if you're writing for research supplements, and many of those are to increase diversity uh, in the in the topic area. Um, you should also include the general scientific achievements um, associated with your um, uh, application for that supplement. And we'll, we'll, we may talk to individuals about that who are applying for supplements uh, through the INBRI or through the CTRs and COBRIs. All right. So the instructions are pretty simple. This is a description of you and how you uh, are suited to undertake the role uh, in, in the grant that you're applying. Um, as always, I try to recommend best practices. I am happy to talk to you about my experience, um, but I try to find places where there's best practices that I can point to you. Uh, the Center for Clinical and Translational Science at, at UAB in Alabama actually analyzed personal statements uh, written by PIs who were subsequently funded, and, and then they discussed them um, the, the, after the analysis. Um, the best statements were concise, about 300 words, and that is a, a recommended length. Uh, but covered all the relevant bases. And in fact, thin statements, um, too short, not enough information, really undermine the confidence of the reviewer in the researcher. 
the best statements adjusted for audience and made the reviewer understand the level of engagement of that investigator in the science of the projects. Uh, so if you use too much jargon, uh, you lost, you lose the reviewers. Again, the reviewers aren't always experts in exactly what you're doing. Uh, reviewers are broadly uh, based on study sections. Uh, statements that were sort of hasty uh, and perfunctory were also uh, not that useful. And the best statements told the story of the person, not the project. And that's the key, I think, to understanding a personal statement. In fact, it's called that for, for that very reason. Um, they, not just what you did, uh, but sort of why. Uh, why you do what you do, why you should be funded. Um, and not necessarily, I should be funded because, but the story you tell in the personal statement should communicate that information uh, to the reviewers. And then you, uh, um, Aaron has these slides, so the link is there for their, um, it's, a, it's a longer presentation uh, that they did at UAB. In addition, they came up with a model uh, and personal statement, and it, it sort of starts with general information, focuses down, um, as you do in specific games, uh, but then becomes more general again. And they call it the six W's personal statement model. Uh, so these are the things that you want to communicate with your personal statement, who I am, including like the rationale uh, for your being the, um, associated with this project. And again, I'm using that kind of language because the personal statement is written if you're a co-investigator, if you're a PI, or you have an, an other sort of uh, significant contribution to the project. So the, the who and the rationale for you uh, being associated should be included in the personal statement. Uh, what I've done to prepare, why I'm ready to do this, uh, when and where, and those are specific pieces of information and that's in the past. Uh, why I am uniquely qualified, including accomplishments, and those are specific and include past and present accomplishments. Uh, and then an indication of sort of what's next, um, including potential. Um, as this project moves forward, um, your potential uh, to grow as a researcher and to move forward in that in that area. Uh, so the six W's uh, is something that UAB and, and it's through a CTSA uh, funded mechanism down there uh, that they were able to do this analysis is a, is a model that they uh, strongly um, recommend. I hope you can see this and again you can have these um, and this is their do's and don'ts uh, for the NIH personal statement, um, and I can go through uh, these in, in the do side. The don'ts um, are just a reflection um, of sort of the opposite. Um, so do tell the story about you and your science. If you follow that six W's, it's a simple structure, um, and you, if you use those, you cover all the bases uh, that are sort of requested in the NIH instructions. Do write in first person, I am, my interest. This is a personal statement. Writing in third person sounds odd and tends to put people off. Uh, do use clear, intelligent language. Um, so it, it should be academic, but again, remember your audience are reviewers that aren't necessarily exactly in your field. They're smart, um, they'll know the, the basics, but if you slip into jargon or you go deeply into uh, sort of academic lingo, uh, you'll lose them. Um, so consider using the kind of a a high level lay audience um, a type of language. Write enough to make an adequate case in their analysis at UAB, that's around 300. If you go too short or too long, um, you're losing people. Uh, and you're sort of raising questions in the reviewers' heads about whether you know what you're doing. Uh, adapt your statement for different projects. I've seen a lot of um, personal statements that are just uh, boilerplate um, and do not mention the specific project. I think that's that's a mistake. Yeah, you're, you have a good opportunity to explain yourself in your personal statement. You should take advantage of it. Make sure you write like you're engaged in your science and they give uh, a list here that means specific examples, details, uh, how things have benefited people, um, sort of descriptions, um, and use um, they called descriptive character words, um, curious, driven, tenacious. Um, that's a little tricky uh, in the writing, um, but using that so that you kind of plant an idea uh, about how enthusiastic you are about science uh, into the reviewer's head is sort of what the goal is there. Use specific names of people or places um, if they are significant for the proposal. Uh, in their examples, my lab is the only, um, should be one in the world that does this. 
do explain any gap in productivity and try to turn that into a strength. Um, so again, back to the clinicians, I know there's several uh, on the call, your clinical training that resulted in a gap in your research productivity strengthens your understanding of the physiology. Um, it, it, you do that as much as you can. Uh, and don't turn in, this is one of the don'ts, don't turn in a first draft. Revise, edit, and proofread it. Uh, reviewers do read these. Um, it's a, especially if you're not familiar with the institution, you know, sometimes if I review a grant, I may have a general idea of who the people are. Um, I'll still look at their bio sketches, uh, and if I don't, I will really look at their bio sketch. Uh, so make sure that you revise, edit, and, and proof it. And there's some additional suggestions. These come from WashU uh, and some of the work that they've done. Um, and it, it, some of these overlap. Um, tailor the personal statement to the proposal. Uh, and this is something I do and I recommend uh, you do and they recommend it as well, is to coordinate with the other key personnel and other significant contributors. So there will be a set of bio sketches with personal statements. So if you're working in a collaboration, you and your collaborator, uh, so your MPIs, should both mention each other in your personal statements. Um, and talk about how you've worked together from, from like the two different sides of the equation and take that opportunity to, to sort of plant in the reviewer's mind and explain to the reviewer, this is how we work, this is how we've been working, this is how we're gonna work together. Uh, specifically state your role and mention the funding mechanism. Uh, so an example here is I will serve as principal investigator for this R21 proposal. Um, it's, it seems odd since they're reviewing an R21 that you're the principal investigator on, um, but it really helps focus and sort of put into the mind of the reviewer that section that they're about to read. And it's highly recommended that you do that. Uh, somehow try to state the reason um, for what you're proposing, so the grant you're proposing as it relates to the purpose of the funding mechanism. And this is particularly relevant if there's a specific FOA or a request for applications that you're applying to. So in the request for applications, there will be specific details about the kinds of work that they will support. You should make a point of mentioning that and tying things back to the funding mechanism, right, which is what the reviewer is thinking about as they're reading your grant and reviewing it. Um, sell your role. This is often the hardest part for uh, scientists, myself included. Um, but you need to communicate why you're well suited to act in the capacity that's proposed in the grant. Uh, what strengths do you have for the proposal? If you're new, and this, you know, future research directions is a good thing to, to include no matter what, but if you're new, put that in. What's the trajectory, right? So if you've been around for a while, um, the reviewer will see your trajectory because they're going to be able to read the whole thing and your contributions to science, and they kind of see where you've been um, and you can state a little bit about where you're going. If you're new or junior, that's less clear to the reviewer. Uh, so just give them an indication of what uh, your future direction is. And if someone is sponsoring, mentoring, collaborating with you, and I mentioned this uh, before, uh, you know, above and coordinated with other key personnel, mention them and discuss both how you have been working together and how you will work together uh, within that personal statement. So those are some additional suggestions. A NIH, I'm gonna have to switch my sharing here. One second. The NIH um, has a sample bio sketch that they seem to use over and over again. I'll pull up here. Um, it, is, it is short. It does cover most of the things that are in the directions. Uh, and I'll, I don't think I sent this to Aaron, but I can send it to Aaron. And, and it can be found online. Right, but it's in first person. It covers a lot of those six W's that the UAB folks uh, found to be effective. Um, and it's a, it's a good one to look at. Um, I also have one of mine, which uh, you can tear apart if you want. Um, this one is actually, I think 380 words. That's why it's highlighted. I just counted the words. And I, this is just one I, I wrote recently um, I'm helping out with a code resubmission that went in from the University of Delaware. But I try to be as specific as possible, explain how, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, why in this particular role is to help with professional development uh, and mentoring the target investigators on that COBRI. 
Uh, so for this grant, that's what I talk about. Uh, and then more generally, like in the third paragraph, talk about my longer interest in clinical and translational research. Um, in, in the case of the specific investigators, that melds in with what they are going to work on. And then because this is a collaborative interaction between the university and Nemours with me, right, uh, the, the four papers that I talk about are uh, collaborative between uh, Nemours and UD. Um, so I can I can you know, abstract that out and send it to you guys if you want to look at uh, one of the ones that uh, that I have put together recently. Um, and going forward, I'd like to get a library of these. We get asked fairly routinely for different types of letters, um, bio sketches, just examples for people to look at. Uh, but that's it. That is the spiel that I have for working on your personal statement. Uh, Aaron will share the PowerPoint with you. Um, and if you have any questions, just let me know. We done, Aaron? We are done. The recording button doesn't seem to be as responsive as the old version. Okay. okay. So.